Amanda, I'm expecting my first child in the next few days, and despite having good jobs, my partner and I are feeling the pinch of interest rate rises and cost of living. Now that you're in government, will you reconsider the stage three tax cuts so I can be reassured my child will experience the same or better quality of life his parents have? Look, um, thank you very much for that question and all the best um, <laughs> for the birth of your child. Um, look, it is a really difficult economy uh, that we've inherited. We've got a situation where we've got rising, rising interest rates, we've got uh, rising inflation and a significant government debt. And really the, the, the debt and the, the budget we were left was, uh, was a mess. And so how so, can you afford to have tax cuts for people on $200,000? Well, <laughs> well, we are going through. Well, <laughs> we're going through the budget in a responsible way, uh, looking at uh, every bit of spending, every bit of uh, how we, we tackle tax. For example, we've said we want to focus on multinational tax. But when we look at what we spend, and we've got to be focused on, uh, focused on our people, we've got to be focused on productivity and what's good for the economy. So the, the global circumstances are changing. We're very alive to that. And I think what you'd expect... Is that us, a no, though? You, you, well, no, it's no, a very what, long answer to what was a very no, 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 simple you, question. What, Stan, what you would expect of us, with a budget coming up, and I know you'd love me to announce the whole budget here tonight, I can't do that, I'll leave that to the Treasurer, but what we're doing is going through the budget process, keeping these very difficult circumstances, taking action where we can, including, for example, childcare and making childcare more affordable in this country, medicines more affordable. We've got to take responsible, targeted action. That's what the Treasurer and the Finance Minister is doing right now, and we'll continue to do that and uh, keep the economic circumstances in place. Alan, I'll come to you on the economics in just a moment. Suzanne, does that answer your question at all? I think it is time to reconsider. Mm. So we're in a situation now where things are changing rapidly, things are getting harder. We've just seen in the UK that they haven't done the tax cuts. So I think it's absolutely time to reconsider now and the things that you're talking about will be a lot easier if you don't do the stage three tax cuts. Suzanne, I, I think... Um... <laughs> You did say you, you, your baby's due in a few days. I think it's due today, isn't it? <laughs> today is the due day, yes. Today is the due <laughs> So good luck. Good luck with that as well. Alan, um, is it time to scrap them? Is it, is it bad oh, economics? It's very difficult. Um, I think you need to put... Uh, everyone says phase three tax cuts. Look what happened in the UK. These are very, very different circumstances. And... I'll sort of give you some numbers, but mm -hmm. where I'm going to come to, I think it's a political issue, a pure on that, uh, and it's up to how the government does it. So what happened in the UK very quickly is you had a new government came in, they announced a package that was not expected, not independently um, valued. If, you know, they've got a, an independent office that sort of does it, so it wasn't there. Half of the package hasn't actually been announced. So anything on the... The, on, on, you know, what are they going to do to saving hasn't been announced. It was basically uh, two bits. One was taxes. Most of those taxes are actually haven't changed. It's just the top end. Mm. Um, and also it was this attempt to stop the prices of electricity going through. Mm. And so what happened was the government uh, essentially said, I'm going to go off and borrow 3% of GDP. Uh, at a time when their government was running a current account deficit of minus eight and they had a higher levels of debt. And so you had very high inflation, so people in Australia don't realise what you've got in the UK. I mm. mean, um, you know, Bank of England's talking about 13% increase in inflation. Most private sector economists are talking 15 to 20. OK? And so what the bond market said is, hang on, you guys are doing exactly the reverse of what the Bank of England's trying to do. And so what then happened was the bond dealers got in and said, this is, just means Bank of England's got to go even higher. Mm. That is a very different situation to what we've got here. But, but the headwinds are there, aren't they? If we look around the rest of the world, and you've talked oh, about yeah. the inflation numbers there, if, if that's what's coming over the horizon, and we've got a wealth gap, and interest rates keep going up, but we're potentially but going into a recession between, ourselves, 2024, yes. before they even start. But will we, will we be in a recession by then? Yeah. 
so the question about the recession, so I'm going to try and say the optimistic side, because we're always trying to be optimistic. Okay? <laughs> the optimistic thing to say is we're not overseas. Hmm. Why? <laughs> three things, three really important things. China has a vaccine that doesn't work against Omicron. So whenever they get it, they close it down. Secondly, you've got Europe, where you've got the Russian gas situation. Mm. And if you want a, a statistic that's really going to scare you, um, they're trying to put a cap at two and a half thousand pounds per annum. The average British consumer, after tax, earns 20,000 pounds. About 15% just to turn the lights on. OK, so that is really a big issue. And then you've got central banks who are out there saying, I'm going to use inflation to get things down. And thing to remember about monetary policy, it takes at least 12 months to work. Yeah. And, 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 and we also know it's a very... And I want to bring Maureen in just on the question of these tax cuts in just a minute, but we also know it's a very blunt instrument. Yeah. And, and, and right now, a lot of people are being hurt. We're not overseas, but we are in Australia. Yeah. We and do so have a growing wealth gap. Interest rates are going up. Inflation is going and up so and people are concerned wages about people, people And wages have, are going people down. People are very that? worried about what's going to happen. And everyone seems to think economists just build these fancy models. And No, it's applied psychology within a framework of a model. And what the sort of problem we've got is people say, oh, rates started to go up and nothing's happened. Things are still good. As a big bank, we can see that most people haven't actually got their notice yet or haven't started paying back. You know, they're going to be, even if rates just go up a little bit from here, they're going to be paying off on average 600 bucks mm. per month extra. That is coming. Then you've got also the fact there's a lot of people who took up those fixed loans and they roll over in the middle of next year. So we're going to have a hit to the economy. And but we don't think it's going to go into a recession, okay. provided you don't go too far in terms of pushing up rates. OK, well, let's go to Maureen here. Um, at a time when people are going to be paying higher interest rates, when they are concerned potentially about a mm. recession, when they are paying more for food and for petrol and other necessities, is it justified to give people who are on $200,000 a year a $9,000 windfall? Because that's how much they'll make with the tax cuts. So what would you be pushing for? Well, absolutely not. And the Greens have been clear from day one. These taxes, stage three tax cuts, made no sense, made no sense when they were introduced. Um, in 2019, and they make even less sense now. And the Greens were really the only party that voted against uh, unwinding a progressive tax system. And, you know, we're sticking to that. As you said, um, Stan, we are in a place here where inequality is rising. We are in the, one of the worst housing crises that Australia has ever seen. People have to choose between paying rent or putting food on the table. People have to choose um, between, you know, paying rent or going to the doctor or the dentist. Um, you know, in what world does it make sense to put more money, $244 billion worth of money, into the pockets of the richest um, and also into the pockets of men? That is just going to tur turbocharge further economic inequality, further gender inequality. And to be really fair, you know, neoliberal, <laughs> decades of neoliberal economics has done nothing for those most in need. It has, nothing has trickled down to them. Where rivers of gold have flown and will continue to flow if these tax cuts go ahead. But you know, there is a little bit of a ray of sunshine, I think, somewhere there. There is unrest in the Labour Party. Um, it seems, and that's only <laughs> on these that. tax cuts, on these tax cuts. Well, you know, <laughs> I've well, been reading the, the newspaper we're a not, little bit. We're not, we're, we're not done with the discussion no, about the economy. but I think the pressure that is being put on the Labour government from literally everyone in the community, except probably the wealthiest, even some of the wealthiest are saying, we don't need these tax cuts. This is not the time to do it. It's just going to further turbocharge the, you know, if there are the storm clouds of a, a recession coming, that's what it's going to do. People are going to suffer more. So we've got to keep the pressure up, folks, and get Labor to commit to scrapping these tax 